everyone welcome back to the channel we're going to look at investing again today particularly sealed product and we're going to look at battle styles today so whew, <laughs> it cops some heat poor old battle styles it's uh what do they call it the uh, xy steam siege of sword and shield the sun and moon crimson invasion of sword and shield but i don't know is it really that bad so i wanted to have a bit of a chat about battle styles i guess a bit of an opinion piece and people are happy to dis uh, I'm happy for people to disagree with me and put some comments down below but I don't really think it deserves the heat that it gets just having a look at the box obviously well not the two most expensive old arts that is the most expensive old art that's my favorite old art from the set the two big characters Empoleon Pyrenitar there <sighs> my two favorite old arts I know the Urshifu um, old arts uh, are up there as well just thought I'd give you guys a quick squiz at the uh, elite trainer box as well but opinion on it is it that bad well I don't think so I think it cops some unfair flack and I know we're talking about investing and it's funny sometimes sometimes uh, the, the most unpopular kid in the class uh, grows up to be the most popular and most successful I'm not saying that's what's going to happen to battle styles because I, I strongly believe that's not going to be the case but I also believe it doesn't deserve the flack that it gets I mean if you compare it to some of the other sword and shield sets particularly the last few with trainer galleries so brilliant stars onwards it, it doesn't compare to those like it's not as nice a set as those sets uh, does it compare to something like evolving skies of course not that is by far and above the best set in the sword and shield era but a lot of people calling it like the steam siege or the crimson invasion like this d-grade set if we're talking like you know s tier a tier b tier c tier and just something that scrapes along the bottom i really don't think battle styles is that bad might be an unpopular opinion but i actually quite like the set and i don't think it's a bad investment so what we're going to do we're going to jump in we're going to look at three criteria again score each out of five to get a score out of 15 at the end of the video so hang around because we'll get the score at the end the higher the score the more investable the set um, just remember the three criteria excuse me what we're looking at is obviously first and foremost the i suppose supply and demand so how much or the print run how much of the set's being printed is there huge demand for the set the second is the pools so are there big pools little pools like you know cards above ten dollars are there hundred dollar cards two hundred dollar cards in the set scoring each of those out of five then of course the third criteria how cool is it how nice is it how fun is it what's the fun factor is it a fun product to keep sealed is it a fun uh, fun product to open a streamer is going to enjoy streaming it and people are going to enjoy viewing the content later down the track so let's jump on in and have a look battle styles print run criteria one this is actually a really hard one to figure out in battle styles because I feel like I've seen it chilling in shops for ages. I went down to the local gaming store today just to pick up a couple of boosters to rip with a few of the boys at work and there were still battle styles ETBs in there. $80 Australian, still on the shelf, probably old stock. So it feels like it's been printed a lot. And I know there was two, a massive first wave in a generous second wave, but then you look at the PSA pop report and there's only been 14,000 cards from Battle Styles graded and 3,000 of those with a Tyranitar. Now, you could go, well, low PSA pop report correlates to low print run, but I think in this instance, you could also argue low PSA pop report is a direct correlation of not having as many desirable cards in the set and therefore people not grading them because they don't think they'll get a return on them. It also seems with those boxes that are still sitting on the shelf, is it a popularity thing? Is that why they're still there? Or is it an overprinting thing? Because I can guarantee this set has not been printed as much as Vivid Voltage and Darkness of Blaze. It, it just hasn't. So one of the first, as one of the first main Sword and Shield sets, it's been printed more than base and it's been printed more than rebel clash but it's not as much as darkness of blaze and vivid voltage so for that reason plus the low pop reports with psa i'm gonna to have to score it a 2.5 2 out of 5 for supply demand and print run criteria two the hits 
This set, like I was saying at the start, cops a lot of flack for its hits. I think, I think there's some better cards in here than what you realise, and they're mainly old arts, and we know the pull rate on those is hard, but I tell you what, this is one hell of a damn good looking card, this Tyranitar V, and if we just look how it's performed over the last year, $70 to $110, that's like, that's nearly a, what, 60, 70% increase in price, that's good going, the Urshifu, Single Strike, Rapid Strike, VMAX, Old Arts, especially the second most, and that Empoleon, that's my favorite card of the set, that is one hell of a good looking old art, really, really good looking card. Scrolling through, you've got the gold level ball. Um, <clears throat> there's the full art Tyranitar V, which is uh, also a good looking card. Ended up pulling that one a couple of weeks ago, which was nice. Um, <clears throat> continuing to scroll through onto the second page, you'll notice there's actually a fair few cards above that 10 US dollar mark gold hound doom. Um, the V, alt arts for single strike and rapid strike Urshifu. The Phoebe's a nice looking card. Couple of rainbow cards there, also above ten dollars. A couple more trainers and golds. I really like the artwork in this set, and for that reason, I'm going to give it a score of three out of five. I don't think it deserves the flack that it cops. I also like the really well. I shouldn't say really low because it's not really low in the grand scheme of things, but low for the rest of Sword and Shield, the bigger Sword and Shield sets like. PSA 10 Tyranitar, PSA 10 Empoleon, the Urshifu, the Rapid Strike Urshifu, relatively low for modern scores in terms of PSA pop. It's not like Charizard VMAX with 12,000 copies. And the final criteria to get our score out of 15 is the fun factor. I think, I actually like the booster box. The booster box is nice to look at. I think it's a fun piece to display. The Elite Trainer boxes, I think are two of the worst out of the Sword and Shield era. Not a huge fan of these. There's not really that fan favorite Pokemon on there. Um, I think what helps the booster box is having the Empoleon and the Tyranitar on the side. Plus, it's you know it's colorful and bright, whereas the booster, the Elite Trainer boxes, sorry, just look a little bit bland for my liking. And I think it's actually going to be a pretty fun product, a fun booster box to open in the future. I don't know whether I've just got a soft spot for battle styles or I feel sorry for it, but. I think for a fun factor, it's it's three out of five for me. I think yeah, I think there's going to be a chase for some of these low, like relatively low modern pop PSA tens in the future. It's a three out of five. That gives us a total of eight point five out of fifteen. That's not a bad score. And the big question: Can we make money? Well, I thought we'd have a squeeze through eBay and just have a look at current battle styles boxes. Um, let's sort it from low to high. And I think we'll find they should be sitting around $200. Let's have a squeeze. Yeah, there you go. $200. Now, three months ago, this box was still, a, this is Australian, by the way, this box was still $160 Australian. So in three months, the new floor, and look, as we go up, there's not too many listings around that $200 price. We soon start pushing up to $230. So once the market absorbs these prices at $200, there's a new floor that's going to be set. And that's what happened a little while ago. When they're at 160, people thought that's a good price. They bought them up at 160. And now the new market price sitting around 200. I think in another, my prediction for this set is it's not as bad as everyone's saying. And I think in the next six months, the new floor will be about $220 a booster box, not 200. Albeit dependent on no reprint for this set. So fingers crossed, I actually really hope we don't see a reprint for this set. I, I can't see the Pokemon company reprinting it. I just, I don't see that for battle styles. Who knows, funnier things have happened. But if it doesn't happen, I can slowly see the sealed pricing creep up. I bought not too many because, you know, it was surrounded by good sets and we had news of sets like Chilling Rain on the way. And I bought one case of battle styles booster boxes. So I've got six of them. Um, I think in Australian dollars, it ended up working out to be about you know, $155 Australian per booster box, which I'm quite happy with. Like, I feel like it's a $200 booster box now. That was what, whenever it was on release. So, geez, two years ago, whenever the set came out. So, I know it's been stagnant for a while, but in two years, it's gone from $155 to $200 a box. I can see in the next two years, this set slowly creeping up. I don't think it's a bad investment right now. I would probably leave it another three or four months until a few more Scarlet and Violet sets roll out. 
just to reaffirm no reprint, I guess. And then I think if they're still around $200 to $210 a box, I don't think it's a bad buy at all. Buy up.